final round of the World Rapid Championships and we have Parham Maksudnu taking on Magnus Carlsen. Magnus is on 9 points but along with him are Artemiev and MVL. So winning this game is a must if he wants to fight for the title. Maksudlu is a player who never really goes for dull openings. He's a fighter and actually he's the perfect opponent that Magnus could have expected in the final round. Magnus is adjusting all his pieces. Maksudlu from Iran. He's getting ready for the game. It's 15 minutes plus 10 seconds increment. It's going to be a cracker of a game. Let's get it cracking. The game begins with Magnus opening with 1 e4 and Maksudlu takes a bit of his time. He can play French, he can play e4, e5, he can also go for the Sicilian. What will he do? He's thinking and he goes for the Sicilian. We have an aggressive opening on the board, knight f3, d6. Is this an invitation for the knight orf? Magnus also loves to play the bishop b5 check by the way. Remember in the final game of his world championship match with, Ka with uh, Anand, he had played that opening but here he goes for the open Sicilian because it's a must win scenario. Knight to c3 and now g6 leads to the dragon, a6 to the knight orf, e6 to skevin engine and knight c6 to classical. <laughs> what is Maksud Lugo to play? He's taking his time. He wants to play something that would throw Magnus slightly off his prep. But Magnus is well prepared in almost all of the lines. So knight c6 was played. We have the classical Sicilian on the board. And Magnus goes for the sharpest line, the Richter Rouser. Queen d2, a6. And you can see Paksudlu making his moves quickly. Bishop d7. Magnus has long castled. Now, one of the plans in such positions is to put your pawn on f4. But Magnus decides to go for f3. And his idea is later to go for g4. Maksudlu takes, queen takes, bishop e7. Generally, in such games, black castles short. But here, you can also start playing on the queen side, just like this, b5. What Maksudlu is trying to do is create play on the other flank while Magnus is starting off his attack on the king side. He wants to go g4 and he wants to start pushing his pawns. But Maksudlu doesn't care. He is now threatening b4, a4, a5, a4 and so on. And Magnus goes g4. So it's a fight on both the wings. b4 played. The knight moves to e2. And now a5 comes in. So black would hope to someday go a4 and b3 and open up lines. Meanwhile, how does Magnus continue? Does he go h5, h6? Does he play uh, somewhere e5? Not really. He plays his knight to g3. Where is the knight going from here? Is it going to f5 or some sack or is it going to h5? Maksudlu ignores it, plays queen c7 and not only is he looking at the c2 pawn, but also is looking at that knight and the bishop comes back. Oh, that's the idea that Magnus was looking for. He wants to play g5 and the knight cannot go to h5 because his knight controls that square. That is smart. That is very, very in interesting decision. Rook c8 played by Maksudlu. Now, for Magnus, it's a choice between defending the pawn on, H on c2 with rook h2. He does it. He plays rook h2. But there was an interesting move. He could have gone bishop a6 and after giving up this pawn, he can come back and play g5. But Magnus decides against it. He plays rook h2 and then checks out the boards of his other two competitors, MVL and Artemia, who are on the same points to know whether he should play for a win or not. Maksudlu says, you have to play for a win, Magnus. I'm pushing d5. And this is a very interesting move because if you were to play g5, your, your knight is hanging. So Magnus plays e5 and look at Maksudlu. He sacrificed his knight. His point is that if you take, he wants to play bishop f6 and then g3 is hanging. So Magnus, instead of taking, he first plays bishop a6, hitting the rook, making the rook move away and then coming back to d3. Now the bishop is looking here. The knight is still hanging. But Maksudlu is planning to ignore it. He brings his rook here because his plan is if you take, he wants to take back and then g3 is hanging. Just so that you know, look at this variation. Take, take, queen f4, e5 
and the pawns are coming forward with d4 and c2 is hanging and e4 coming in there are a lot of threats so magnus plays his queen to f4 excellent move threatening to take on f6 so the knight jumps back and now how do you continue the attack your bishop is looking here some sacrifice bishop at seven is in the air but maybe it's too soon to do that so magnus first pushes his pawn he's like i'm going ahead parham can parham go a4 not really he first wants to trade off the bishop on e3 and well magnus can just trade now or he can even go h5 and just create a lot of play on the king side it feels somehow that white's attack is coming faster so magnus carlsen takes on c5 queen takes c5 and now you can think of again bishop at 7 king at 7 queen takes f7 you can also think of some g6 ideas after bishop at 7 but you can also play the very simple h5 and then you have this rook also coming into the game magnus has four minutes and he plays h5 maksudlu has three extra minutes on the clock and he's hoping that he can trade off this bishop on d3 and that's the reason why a very interesting plan could be bishop b5 and maksudlu plays it he wants to trade off that bishop but now magnus switches into his calculation mode imagine this situation you are just few minutes away from winning the title you need to sacrifice this bishop at 7 king at 7 take on f7 followed by g6 and at 6 it's a bone crushing attack that magnus carlsen has here but will he have the courage to do that online is a world title all the prize money and everything that comes along with it magnus carlsen chops off on h7 beautiful move the world champion is not shying away he's taken on h7 and parham now has to take it because if he goes king f8 then i push my pawn to h6 and back by the rook the pawn is moving forward i really love how this rook on h2 is doing multiple roles of attack and defense king takes and magnus gives a check f takes g6 and this is where magnus is calculating there are many ways to win one of them is to take here if king comes up then knight h5 followed by the rook coming here or the queen coming in it's very powerful but also another very interesting plan is to park your queen on f7 not letting the king escape and that is exactly what magnus does queen to f7 and now the king cannot escape out of this he it is boxed in and the threat is h takes g6 checkmate magnus carlsen knows he's very close to victory you can see that expression there he really knew that this is now over he knows this is over maksudlu trying his best to figure a way out but there is none and uh, you know just to show you a variation if you take here rook takes h5 is checkmate maybe the only move that makes sense is g5 but after h6 lines are opening up against the king and this is one of the most pleasant feelings out there when you have a winning attack you know you are winning and your opponent is unable to find a way magnus carlsen enjoying himself while maksudlu thinking between resignation or just making one more move to continue this suffering here well he decides to push his pawn to g5 magnus pushes at six and there you have resignation magnus carlsen is happy Maksudlu, like a gentleman, congratulates him. But Magnus is still worried about other games that are going on. He tells Maksudlu it's a huge attack that came in later on in the day. MVL drew against our, uh, against Kaimar and Karuana beat Artemiev to hand Magnus Carlsen the clear first position. I like how both the players are analyzing even after losing Maksudlu is very interested to know where he could have improved and Magnus Carlsen has played a beautiful game to win in 28 moves. Life is full of exciting events, but it is our first impressions that we remember best. Your first diploma, your first job in a big company. Unforgettable emotions from the first date. The first expensive things you bought when you got your first paycheck. 
and your first investments with Freedom Broker. Freedom Broker. Look at your favorite brands from a new perspective.